So let's really go now into the next part of your very remarkable journey. So we are now in 2010 and your wife says you have to go to the doctor. Tell us what happens next. Well, that that's, uh, and you know, excuse me if I get a bit emotional here. It's fine. Um, in 2010, I had a conversation with my wife which kind of resolved in a way that had I not listened to her, she actually threatened to kill me. You wow. know, I have to put it's it as threat. blunt as that. A threat. Yeah, because she said, look, you need to do something about your snoring. Right. So I said to her, make the appointment and I'll go to the doctor. Right. So she made the appointment and I went to the doctor. And um, while I was sitting in the surgery waiting right, to meet the doctor, I um, stretched across and picked up a leaflet started reading the leaflet didn't really think a great deal of it when I went to the reception and I asked the receptionist to make an appointment right, for me to have this test I actually thought the test I was having was testicle cancer because I thought well I'm involved in football and it's a, it's a common problem in football right. sports so I thought you know while I'm here I'll have a check um, the receptionist said to me, yeah, we can do this test for you today. So I said, fine. <clears throat> I said, well, let's let's do it then. So um, it's a simple blood test. It takes five minutes. Um, did that. Went back to work. Didn't think any more. Two days later, I got a phone call from the uh, surgery. Could I come in to do another blood test? So I, I thought, okay. So I came in, um, did the other blood test. Uh, straight away, the doctor said to me, um, we found something in your blood, which I thought was a bit strange because it was all happening so quickly. Yeah. So um, luckily, or lucky for myself, when I went for the second appointment, my wife actually came with me because she was a bit shocked that I went to the doctor to see about my snoring and, and now you're ended taking up, yeah, blood tests. now I'm taking a blood test which and at that point you still thought that it was you were looking at a test for testicular cancer yeah but in fact yeah now the the, the, the bigger problem was unfolding you know um, they said the doctor said to me we're gonna um, organize a biopsy for you so I said well when are we gonna do this then he said no this is gonna be done today so I thought, okay. I tried not to panic because that's normally what I'm, I do, not panic about things. Mm. And um, I had the biopsy. And again, luckily, my wife was there with me when they uh, gave me the results. And uh, the doctor said to me, he sat me down and he said to me, uh, Mr. McKellar, we found traces of cancer right, when we did the test. Now, I just completely went blank in this conversation and I got up and I left the surgery room right because I thought well he cannot be talking to me um, I went straight back to work as if the whole thing didn't happen and luckily right when I got home right, my wife sat me down and we had to have a real heart-to-heart -heart conversation because she said to me look this is a serious problem and this is something that is not going to go away and you have to understand what it is that you've got. Even at that time I didn't register what the problem was and how serious it was and um, she said to me uh, you know they're saying that you've got cancer in the prostate and I was still sort of like not coming to terms with it so you know all of this happened really quickly. This happened in a space of seven days. You know, got from a simple blood test to a biopsy and then being told at the end of seven days that you've got cancer, which is a little bit, you know... That's a lot to take yeah, in. Yeah, it's... You know, I've always been very free-spirited and very sort of uplifting and not fearing that there's nothing that I can't deal with. Right. But this was... This was a lot to this take made on board. You think. Yeah. Um, and again, I have to say, luckily, 
you know, with the support and the strength of my wife, I was able to sort of go through the, the general things that needed to be dealt with in order to sort of get to the root of what the problem was. Right. Um, but, you know, when, when I was actually about to have the operation, I think it started to kick in how serious this problem is because mm. it changes your life. Yes. You know? Um, when I came out of this operation, I then had to sit down and look at the whole situation differently because the doctor said to me, look, in this operation, the most important thing is how you deal with it. You know, and because I've always been positive, I thought, how do I turn this around? I thought the best way to do this is become a campaigner. Right. You know, so now I th I see myself as a one man stand against right. this illness. Right. Uh, so from diagn from going to your doctor originally for a snoring problem, yeah, to having two tests, two tests, and then yeah. having a biopsy, yeah, and then surgery. That happened over what course of time? All of this happened in a space of 12 weeks. 12 weeks. Yeah. All of this, the problem that I found with all of this is that it, no, it all happened so fast, right. you know, but what the doctors were saying is that we have to deal with this because if we leave it, right, this will kill you. I so think you told me when yeah. we talked earlier within six months. Yeah, yeah. This is the time they gave me. They said, look, we're going to have to remove the whole of your prostate because it's covered in cancer. And as I say, it's it when it when it's told to you like that, right, then you have to start yeah. really taking um you know, you have to take it on board as to what they're saying. But it doesn't hit you until you've had the operation. Right. You know? Um 